introduce yourself? My name is George Pransky. I live in, in Lacano with my wife, Linda. I have two kids and uh, five grandchildren. What is your personal experience of living with illness? Well, uh, I had a stroke um, two years ago. And when I, uh, as a result of the stroke, I lost, um, I had paralysis on my left side. So I lost my speech center. So that's where, that's what I, uh, so my, uh, my life was a, 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 about recovering from that stroke. And what were you up to before your stroke? Well, before my stroke, I was uh, a counselor and a, a seminar leader. And, and I had the stroke. And after I had the stroke, I, I thought to myself, I had this sinking feeling that I wasn't going to be, be able to uh, run semina seminars. And it really hit me like a ton of bricks. And how did the stroke change your life? Well, there was a lot of time in in uh, recovery. So I uh, I sp I spend a lot of time in in recovery from my stroke. And uh, to tell you the truth, I don't feel like I've, my recovery is complete because I don't think I'm back where I was. But I'm, I'm seeing a, a really good learning curve. I feel like every every month that goes by, uh, I'm doing better. And that's very gratifying to me because it could, it could have been every month that I went by, I, I was doing worse. <laughs> so the fact that I'm making progress is uh, really mad, matters to me. What's been helpful to you in navigating that process? I noticed that I had that I I had my moods, and I noticed that they were very hard for me to negotiate. So I could get I easily get down in the mouth in the mouth, uh, and, and and that was uh, a lot of uh, a lot of my life. After the stroke, I, I, I was uh, moody. What was helpful? It was help to help helpful helpful to me to really come come in, come to peace with the fact that I did have moods. Mm. And when my, my mood was low, uh, I, I just st stuck with it and I, I didn't react to it very much. So you, you couldn't tell that my mood was low. And and the other thing is, uh, I was able to negotiate 
my moods so that uh, I didn't get way down in the mouth. You said you, you realized that you had moods and I wanted to ask how that might be helpful to know. Well, I, I, I mean, it, see, it seems to me that everybody has moods. Some, some people have very, you know, very strong moods and other people, and it, it doesn't affect them as much. But the thing is, uh, let me see. Let me see how I said, Julian. Uh, one thing that happened to me is, in in my wife would would say this too. Uh, I became, uh, I kind of, uh, let me see. I became much more, a much more thoughtful person after I had my stroke. Did you start to notice things differently? I did. I noticed I had, uh, like for instance, I really appreciated uh, my wife's fondness of me, and I didn't uh, appreciate it before my stroke. But she was really—I could really tell that she was really fond of me, and I was really crazy about her and I didn't know that before I had my stroke so I didn't realize it had it changed the the way we were with each other and the other thing I I noticed is I had it seemed like I had all the time in the world Uh, and it was just a, I, 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 I didn't feel rushed without realizing it. Prior to the, my stroke, I felt under time pressure. And I don't know why, <laughs> why I, I, I thought under time pressure, but I thought, well, look, look, I got to get going here. I, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why I, I thought that, but that's what I was thinking. I, I got to get going here. But then, after my stroke, I realized that that was bogus. That wasn't at all true. What looked true instead? Well, it 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 looked to me that I had as much time as I wanted to live my life. I wasn't under, un, under time pressure. That was a mistaken, mistake in my perception of life. And what impact has it had on the quality of your relationships overall? Well, it, it changed with my relationship with my wife because I'm gonna say on a scale of uh, one to 10, before my stroke, I was, I don't know, a five in terms of my closeness with my wife and I thought a five was great <laughs> that was really good really good 
But then I realized that we we got I, I start I started to see the possibility with us. It um, helped me across the board. Because I, I felt very patient with people, and I my rapport of, with them deepened many fold. Mm -hmm. I just appreciated people more. Now I didn't think that, I, I didn't think there was any uh, problem before that that appreciating people, but I didn't realize that after I had my stroke, I, uh, I, people were very endeared, endearing to me. And that's something that was a gift that the stroke gave me. But the quality of my thinking uh, was another thing that changed dramatically. I, uh, I, uh, I felt so close to people. Mm -hmm. And that's that was as uh, one of the benefits of the stroke is I I felt all of a sudden I was much more compassionate and understanding of people, and I didn't know how that came about, but I was grateful for that. Matter of fact, I kind of felt like I kind of missed the boat earlier in my life when I, when I didn't, when I, I wasn't, didn't feel so close to people. So that was a real gift. Somebody approached me not long ago about their father who has just had a stroke and is really struggling with the change and finding it really difficult to accept what has happened and is has a lot of very distressed thinking. Yeah. And let's say somebody is watching this who's in that place what would you say to them? What might be helpful? What would you like them to know? People don't realize the fact of overwhelm. I think that's something, if I were do, I don't know, if I were, do, you know, doing a seminar for someone or, or work with them, that would be something that I would want to get across to them. Could you explain what you mean by that, please? Well, uh, before my stroke, I I was at a, a heightened sense of being overwhelmed, and I I thought to myself, "Gee, that's one thing. That's one thing I have to be concerned concern myself." is it's going to be easy for me to get overwhelmed with my experience. Are you, are you saying that before you had your stroke, you used to become overwhelmed easily? Yes. My stroke showed me how to manage overwhelm. That all I had to do 
was slow down and I wouldn't get overwhelmed. And I didn't know that because I was used to getting overwhelmed and getting over overwhelmed and 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 it was a big part of my life before my stroke i didn't think that that being overwhelmed was a problem because i could all i had to do was think faster and i could outrun it so that's what i thought But after my, my stroke, I, I, I could not pe keep up with my mind. So overwhelm was, a, was a, uh, an ongoing problem. So I had to slow things down. So I didn't, I didn't get well, overwhelmed. Now, it turns out that slowing things down, I got, got away with slowing things down because I think people have a, a general sense that, they, that it, it's easy to, to get, uh, to think, for your mind to get out of control. I think that's, I think people in, in there, they, they, they know that about life. It's easy to get overwhelmed by life. But most people don't, put on, on the brakes when they when they get overwhelmed and they just grin and bear it. People without realizing it, their minds speed up. And uh, they're what well, I guess they're Understanding takes a hit. I, I call it uh, slow down to the speed of life. Beautiful. So it's not like I, it's not like I, I tell them I advise, I advise them to slow down. But I, I essentially, that's the role ball model, model that I have. I just recognize that people, if people slow down, they'll get more out of life. So the, the, they won't have to make it up in volume. <laughs> That's it. Let's say they won't have to make it up in, in volume. I'm, I'm interested in knowing what it was that kept you, how you kept going in the beginning after your stroke? I put all of my attention in not discar getting discouraged. That was the key to me. I figured if I don't get discouraged, I'm going to do good. And the only thing I was concerned about if it was discouragement. And I saw discouragement as a bad idea. 
a very bad, a very bad. So, so anytime I wasn't discouraged, I was clicking my heels and feeling, wow, this is great. And that's wonderful. And for anyone who's listening and says, and is thinking to themselves, but what if I feel discouraged? Well, you just got to get over it. I mean, people get are capable of getting over things. And if you get discouraged, if you get, you can get over it. And when you, and the the reason the the thing that will tell you that you're just get over got got over it is that you're no longer discouraged. Now I could use several adjectives, so there's. You know, the people who say, uh, are, they could say dis disheartened. And, and, but I like being discouraged proof. To me, that's has a lot of meaning. If you're discouragement proof, That's all you have to do in life is get so that you're discouragement proof. And what what enabled you to become discouragement proof? Well, in a way, I I make it on my I make it my business to be discouragement proof. And in my my wife Linda makes it her business to be discouragement proof because uh we're a team. Linda and I are, are a team. Well I wanted to say one more thing about young children you don't have you don't have to teach a, a young child to be discouragement proof they're built that they they understand the judgment uh, 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 discouragement proof so you don't you don't have to teach them that they're built to be resistant to discouragement. So do you think being discouraged is something we learn? Yeah, I I I I do. I think it's uh if, if we're not if we're not mindful of how we're living life, we're going to be a victim of discouragement proof, uh, uh, discouragement. George, did you get frustrated about the stroke or about what happened to you? Yeah. I, 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 it it really lowered my spirits the stroke uh, lowered my spirits and uh, i had to recover my my own resilience i had to uh, what uh, learned that I that I was resilient.
and and I felt like I had to learn that uh, for my own what you see how to say it. I had to learn that in order to um, progress in my life. Because if I didn't learn that, I, I didn't think I could progress in my life. See, the one thing that I that I learned, Julian, is I have a lot of respect for what you could call a learning curve. So it's really, uh, it, it really helps me to see the, the progression I can have. You know, that doesn't, does a lot for me to progress in my life. And even a little progression, progress, uh, I appreciate. Really that's where yeah, that's where people can, in my in mind, can pull themselves out up by their own bootstraps. So I think I think it's wonderful that human being beings are built to be resilient. It'd be a whole different world if we weren't built, built to be resilient. That would be a, a whole different world. Thank you Hi. so much, George. This has been a really beautiful conversation. Oh, good. Good. I'm glad you. I'm glad you like it. <laughs>